Happy Merry Christmas month, everybody. Boy, it has been, it has been a long time. In that time, I went to Disney World for the first time ever. Let me explain to you a thing, an important thing. Disney World was a dream of mine since I was a very young child. I grew up in California, so I've been to Disneyland a million times. It's still one of my favorite places on earth, honestly. Like, I think it actually is my favorite place on earth. It, it, Disney World and Disneyland equally now. I pour 90% of my heart and soul into Disneyland. The other 10% I reserve for my friends, my family, Jordan, and my cat, in that order. Just kidding. The cat goes first. Disney World was my dream. I had always wanted to go to Disney World. I mean like, because what can be better than a land of Disney? A world of Disney. So Disney World was my graduation present and I graduated in like April and I had a lot of work coming up and I didn't want to go in the summer because I've been to Florida in the summer. It's like breathing through a wet washcloth in 100 degree heat. So I waited. I, I didn't want to wait, but I waited, and it was awesome. I went the week before the week of Thanksgiving, and it, the Christmas decorations were there, the lights were there, snow fell at night, but there was nobody there. It was excellent. The only lines that were a problem were Snow White and Frozen. I went to Snow White, but I don't really care about Frozen that much, so I just didn't go. Anyway, all of this is preamble to something very, very important. I need you guys to know something about me. It is important. It's very important. I'm really into Disney, in case you couldn't tell. I don't mean that I like the occasional Disney movie. I mean like I have researched Disneyland and Disney World and like all things Disney extensively. I've got this weird fascination with the parks especially, how rides work, abandoned rides, I'm like a sucker for animatronics, the history of Disneyland, hidden Mickeys, secrets, I'm, I'm all for that. It began one fateful week when I had a really bad case of strep throat. I'd always been a fan of Disneyland. I've gone at least once a year, basically every year of my life since I was a kid because I'm from California. But this was a turning point. I stumbled onto some kind of article about like deaths at Disneyland. It was, it was super weird, but I was morbidly curious and also really sick and bored in bed. So I read it and then I kept following more and more links until I was learning about like ride renovations and how the animatronics worked and abandoned parts of the parks and 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 down the rabbit hole I went and I'm still there. A lot of people don't know this about me until they really like get in a conversation with me. They just assume I like Disney but then we like get to talking and they slowly but surely realize oh my. So now I love talking about the attractions and the parks and the atmosphere of Disneyland. I mean Disney World too but I've really only been once and I've been to Disneyland a million times. I was proposed to at Disney. I went to Disney after I got married. I go to Disney every year. That's just the kind of person I am. I've always wanted to talk about this stuff with you guys but I felt limited by my channel subject. But now I don't care because I'm old and crotchety and I eat popcorn for dinner at two in the morning and I want to talk about what I like. So let's go. I'm just calling this Disney stuff for now. Maybe you guys can help me think of a better name for these videos. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't given it much thought, to be honest. If you can do, you can, you can do all the creative leg work for me. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about my least favorite ride of all the rides in the great park of Disneyland. And I'm so excited because I rarely get to vent about this to people who care. Actually, you might not care. <laughs> But there has to be some of you. Disneyland is full of amazing and immersive rides. From my personal favorite, the Haunted Mansion, to, you know, to, you know, faster and more fun rides like Matterhorn and Thunder Mountain. Sure, they're not all winners in terms of thrills and, um, modernness, but there's something about them that gives them character. D-Land has a lineup of great and diverse rides, and this piece of crap is not one of them. Where do I even begin with Autopia? I've hated Autopia since day one. I doggedly avoided it throughout my childhood because it reminded me of the cars that you would see at mini golf courses and arcades because that's basically what they are except on a track and slow. And I wasn't interested because I had those at home and they weren't fun there either. But fate is cruel and my parents gave me a little brother and at one point he really wanted to go on this very stupid ride. I fought and failed and waited in line in the middle of summer for two hours for this horrible, horrible ride. Oh my gosh, it is so hot outside and you're just standing there waiting in line in the hot sun for, for slow cars. Slow cars 
on a track, outside in the sun, exposed to the elements. Nothing to look at but fake billboards. Ugh. As you can imagine, going on the ride did not make me like the ride. And I honestly have only been on it once ever since then. Again, with small children who really really wanted to sit in tiny, slow, loud cars. So let's start with the ride itself. This thing goes on forever. Actually, hold on, scratch that. This thing goes on for about five minutes, but it really, really feels like forever. And you know what? I love most forever rides. Snagging a quick nap on Small World or Pirates is the business, and I highly recommend it. But not in a teeny car in the hot sun, zipping along at the dismal speed of six miles an hour. No thanks. One of my biggest problems with Autopia is it is stupid loud. Like, as loud as the rocket rods were, except all the time, all, all day long, not, you know, in intervals of every few minutes. But there's been a recent refurbishment since by Chevron, and people claim it's quieter. I, I, I don't know. Um, I can't, honestly, I'm not even sure if I've been there since the refurbishment. I like, I avoid Autopia. I don't even look at it. I don't even look at it when I walk into Tomorrowland. I look straight ahead or to the right or at Astro Blasters. Anything more in this direction, it's nothing to me. It's not there. It doesn't exist. But as far as I know, they're still loud and obnoxious. Stupid loud and obnoxious. Apparently, they've installed quieter car engines. And hey, if that's true, then all that's left to fix is, uh, you know, the boring scenery, the pathetic speed, the fact that the cars break down every five minutes, and uh, getting rid of the whole thing. When Disney started refurbishing, I was so excited. Because I thought, okay, good. Refurbishments are where Disney rides go to die. Sweet. But then they lifted up the tarp, and there was a brand new sign. New Honda Collab. And now I'm afraid it will literally never leave. And can't we just talk about the size of this thing? How has it not been scrapped for a billion much better ideas? A Sugar Rush Thrill Ride. A giant arcade like Disney Quest at Disney Springs, except updated and cool. A Tron roller coaster like they have in Hong Kong. Literally anything. Like maybe, I don't know, a futuristic Marvel ride based off a popular Marvel movie? I'll take a where to put a new attraction for 300. This is what you should do if you want to build a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. What is replace a popular beloved ride in another park where the aesthetics don't match at all? Oh, I'm sorry. The correct answer is to do the smart thing, you dummy. Oh my goodness. Seriously, I can make another video. I can make 10 other videos about all my problems with California Adventure. But what? What? You're, you're not going to put this freaking ride in Tomorrowland? You're going to put it smack in 1920s Hollywood in California adventure and you're going to replace Tower of Terror with this? And at first I was like, well, okay, maybe Disney will get rid of Autopia and they just want to put something else in that massive space. Like, wait, you're putting Star Wars Land where? Okay, okay, I realize I'm not an Imagineer or a businesswoman, or a ride planner or builder. I don't have access to Disney's fiscal records, or contracts, or business plans. And I'm just a mere mortal. I can own up to that. But it seems to me that the best thing to do here is get rid of this dismal giant Innoventions building, which as far as I can tell is nothing but a glorified character meet and greet, and this nightmare ride, and then put your Star Wars stuff here. You know, buy the rest of the Star Wars stuff. That's just me. That just seems the smartest. I can't imagine that the transition from Frontierland to freaking Star Wars land is gonna be all that seamless. But hey, back to the nightmare ride. You know what else bothers me? This is called Tomorrowland. You walk in and it's like rockets. Interstellar travel. The future. And then... Cars? It's just... It's just cars, man. It's the... Thing you sat in on the 22 in bumper to bumper traffic on your way to the flippin' park. It's a it's a car. Not even a future car. Not even a cars movie car. A car. Yeah, hey, you know, I was also thinking of new ideas for Tomorrowland. Like, hey, what about the magic two-wheel ride? Or the moving stairs adventure? You know, cool future things. I should make it clear that while I love a lot of classic Disney rides, I'm not really a purist. If something has run its course, nine out of ten times, I am A-OK -okay with being done with it. If it's gotta go, it's gotta go, and this thing has got to go. Why won't I say the same thing for other slow rides, like Small World and Snow White? Because things are actually happening in those rides. Actual things around you, animatronics, 
Music, characters, wow! But no, Autopia's too good for that. Who needs a stellar atmosphere when you've got billboards and car statues and trees? Now, if you like Autopia, I'm not making fun of you, I promise. There are a lot of attractions that I like that many people hate. If I had it my way, I would spend half my time in the Tiki Room <laughs> because I love it. This is just one fan's opinion. Get rid of it, Disney. Please. Please stop renewing these contracts. Please get rid of it. It's huge. It's noisy. It's boring. And then when you're done with that, we could talk about those submarines, or should I say claustrophobia for the sake of screens underwater.